Welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to, to have you all here in our today's session. Okay, we are all connected. Uh, maybe a few will be able to join, but um, yes, it's a pleasure to have you all today for a switch pitch episode with our focus on friends. So I want to warmly welcome you all. My name is uh, Isabel, I'm community project manager from EVPA. And uh, before we start our conversation, I would like maybe to give us a brief introduction about what is our better incubation project. And then uh, I will hand over to our speaker who will present about their work and their experience. And then afterwards, we can come to you, the audience, uh, those who are here in the room, and we can uh, hear also from you and you can share some questions as we're going to have a Q&A time. But uh, maybe before that, I would like to invite you all, um, if you're willing to change your name in the Zoom here. I see you all have your first name and last name, but if you want to add the name of your organization, please feel free. And um, as we are a few here, maybe we can also do a, a round of introduction. Uh, so if you're willing then to share your camera and then you can share a bit about yourself, uh, where you're located, um, what is your organization, and if you're a social investor or an incubator, accelerator, or other. Um, otherwise, if there are any sound problems or camera, of course, you can share this as well in our chat here. Um, maybe I'm going to start with the first set who appears here uh, with Christina Weider from FEF. Yes, hello. I'm putting hello. my camera on, I think. Soon it will connect, perhaps. Or perhaps not. Um, hang on. There we go. There we go. I'm connected. Um, hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Christina. I'm the executive director of FAIR, which is an endowment fund based in France that supports refugee entrepreneurs. Uh, so we have several programs and we operate in several different areas. We have a donation program where we fund incubator programs for refugee and migrant entrepreneurs. We have a loan program where we invest directly via zero interest loans and uh, support with mentoring, strategic support, coaching, uh, select entrepreneurs in their startup projects. We also have uh, an advocacy arm where we're looking at possibilities. We'd like to do some more study work and get some more uh, sort of observatory put together so that we can have a better idea of the state of refugee entrepreneurship in France, as there's very little information and statistics available um, on, on those entrepreneurs today. Thank you for sharing, Christina. Um, maybe Mariette, Zetli, would you like to share? Um, hi everyone, and I see now also Francesca joined. We are actually co-workers. Uh, we are from uh, Acube, uh, which is a certified incubator and accelerator focused on social impact uh, startup. Um, uh, we have uh, we are actually part of a, a broader uh, organization which is called Avanci, and that focuses on uh, um, sustainability consulting, uh, communication, uh, and uh, uh, urban regeneration projects. Um, and yeah, we are uh, uh, we we design and manage incubation and acceleration programs uh, for um, for startups or uh, idea. Um, that have a social, cultural, uh, um, or environmental impact. And can, I, can I just ask where uh, you're based, please? We are based in Milan, uh, but we have uh, programs uh, throughout uh, Italy. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Maria. May, um, Francesca? I think I cannot add nothing because we are co-working, but uh, I'm Francesca Pallara and um, I'm the, the person that are specialized in the financial planning and uh, fundraising strategy. So I work in the acceleration team, uh, helping the startup in the match with the uh, investors. And uh, we will... 
also are um, the advisor of a, a, an investment fund that is uh, Impact, I want to see CICAF uh, Eureka, and uh, I think this is... Thank you for sharing. Uh, now I have Sandra van Boom. This? Yes, we hear yes. you. Yes, I thought that was bitten. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm Sander. I'm not Arthur. I was asked by Arthur to uh, to fill in. Um, we're from uh, from Mapbox. From Mapbox is a personal environment where you can keep your own data, and we work a lot with starting companies, also companies from from Ukraine currently and other countries, mm -hmm. um, because everyone, yeah, at some point needs to do something with data. And as such, we help a lot of companies that are doing something in that space. Uh, we're based in Leiden, the Netherlands, uh, but we have lots of activities like all over the world currently. That's, uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, now I also see Sophie Fajou, would you like uh, to share a few words? Welcome. Thank you very much, Isabel. Delighted to be with you. Good to see many well-known uh, faces. Bonjour, Jean-Michel and Christina. And uh, sorry if, if I don't mention everybody. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Sophie, welcome. Uh, I also see Eliane Belouf, welcome as well. If you would like to share a few words uh, on uh, what organization you represent and what you do and where you're located. And if you're a social impact investor or an incubator, feel free to jump in if you want. So maybe there's some uh, uh, connection problems. Otherwise, feel free to also share this in the chat so we can have a trace of it. And um, uh, we have also then our speaker of today, Jean-Michel Lucuier, uh, Jean Lucuier from INCO. And uh, um, I will share then also a few words uh, afterwards. But maybe before, just um, to share a few words on our project, Better Incubation Project, um, I will share also my screen. It's just a few words um, about what it is and also that we have then all the same idea. Um, so here. Okay, so yes, it's a two-year program uh, that started in 2021 and it's funded by the EU, the DG Employment, and co-led by three organizations, so the EBN, EBPA, and uh, Impact Hub. And the aim of the Better Incubation Program is really to uh, foster uh, inclusive and uh, social entrepreneurship here in Europe, and really to also mobilize and empower um, business support organizations, so incubators or accelerators. And the, the aim is really to bring uh, an effective help to social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who are from underrepresented groups, like for example, migrants, refugees, women, people with disabilities and others. And really the idea is to help them in a better way to grow in, with their business, to give them an environment where they can thrive and also to have better connections with social investors. And that's why we have started this work. And at the beginning, um, Better Incubation started with strong, um, uh, yes, here's the next slide, with a strong capacity building component. And now we have continued our work as well with a series of activities, including this uh, series where we uh, have informal conversations between social investors and impact business support organizations where they can share their mindset, uh, but also their experience about this collaboration work uh, that they have between each other in order to support better uh, their beneficiaries. So it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce you our speaker of today, Jean-Michel Lucure, like we mentioned before. He's the managing director of INCO. And uh, in France, they really support uh, social enterprises and they do it with impact investing fund with a network of incubators and as well training. And I will not develop much more, but I will then hand over to our speaker today. So welcome. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we look forward to the conversation. And to all those who are in the audience, if you have any questions, we will have afterwards the Q&A. So feel free to share your questions also in the chat. 
So thank you, Jean Michel. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Isabel, and uh, nice to meet you all uh, to speak about the relation between uh, incubation and investing. Uh, I uh, will be keen if you agree with a short presentation of uh, Inco. So uh, I am uh, going to uh, share it. Okay, do you see it? So uh, INCO uh, is an organization based in France uh, that was created 10 years ago uh, and uh, which our goal is to help building a sustainable and inclusive economy. And I think uh, around the table, we all that, uh, have that goal in fact. And uh, we do it by uh, through incubation programs, through uh, training programs, and a true uh, investing in uh, uh, strong impact uh, companies. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to present to you is our investment uh, activities. Uh, we manage around uh, 200 million euros uh, that uh, are invested. So we, we really invested by now about uh, 130 million euros in uh, about uh, 100 companies that are commercial companies, but that can be uh, NGOs too, uh, that can be uh, cooperatives. So uh, the, the scale of uh, possibilities uh, in terms of uh, uh, kind of uh, entity to be uh, financed by hands is quite uh, uh, large. Uh, we are mainly financing the acceleration of young companies but we don't uh, invest as uh, pre-seed or seed investors. We, we invest as like pre-series A or uh, a series investors, uh, but we will speak again about it uh, later. We invest between uh, 300,000 uh, euros and 1 million euro uh, when we first invest in a company. Sometimes we reinvest, uh, of course. And we try to stay uh, in the company uh, for five to seven years. Uh, we uh, are equity investors. Uh, that means that uh, we, uh, uh, we are shareholders uh, in commercial companies and uh, we are members of the boards of the companies usually. But we finance, but when, when we finance an NGO, uh, we, uh, we finance it with quasi equity. So we are not member of the board. Or uh, participate in the strategic committee. Uh, you can see who are our investors, uh, our limited partners, uh, and uh, they are mainly insurance companies like uh, Generali, uh, Abeille, uh, uh, or AXA. Uh, they are uh, uh, mutual funds uh, managing. Um, uh, like uh, Maraco for ISO, there are uh, some companies that invest uh, the, the money uh, from the um, employees, uh, like Teres, uh, and there are uh, asset management companies which are managing uh, what we call in France solidarity based uh, investment funds, uh, that uh, the money coming from uh, employees from big companies or from uh, people subscribing insurance, uh, life insurance uh, company. Uh, we invest in uh, different fields, uh, all uh, with a strong uh, social or environmental impact. So in uh, ecological and energy innovation, in the field of health and services for uh, the vulnerable people, in collaborative and circular economy, and in uh, companies that are uh, developing uh, solutions in terms of education for uh, uh, of sustainable employment, of local development, uh, et cetera. So uh, we invest mainly in France. We are invested in one company in the Netherlands. Maybe Asanda uh, knows uh, that company. Uh, it's uh, Lend uh, an equity uh, lending, uh, crowd lending platform. Uh, and, uh, and in the company based in Belgium too, but uh, our, the majority of our investments are, are in France uh, by them. Uh, 
And uh, you can see on that slide that we manage uh, different funds. Uh, sometimes it's a multi-investor fund like Eco Investment, and sometimes it's uh, a fund dedicated to a specific partner like Generali. And we, when we work with a partner, we work on a specific thematics. And uh, uh, concerning Generali, for example, uh, we finance. Um, structures, companies, or uh, organizations uh, that, that support uh, the, the professional insertion uh, of refugees, uh, or we finance uh, companies uh, that uh, support um, families in difficulty. So it's the same thematics that uh, the foundation of the uh, called uh, the human safety. So I, uh, I would be very interested to have a conversation, a private conversation maybe with Christina, because uh, the, the financing of, of uh, refugee entrepreneurs are potential thematic for that firm, but just by now, we are not able to finance any uh, refugee entrepreneur. Uh, and we have an activity of advising other firms uh, in the measurement of their social and environmental impact, because of course, uh, our what we promise to all those uh, limited partners is that we will invest in companies that deliver real impact, social and environmental impact. And of course, we have to demonstrate that uh, that impact is tangible. So we developed uh, some tools uh, to uh, to measure and to support companies in the measurement uh, and the development of their impact, which is, in fact, our final goal. Well, that's it. And you can see on that slide uh, the kind of uh, impact we measure with concerning the different um, uh, SDGs. Uh, and we try every year to do uh, a global perception for our investors impact of uh, Well, that's it about uh, INCO. I hope it's uh, clear enough. Um, if you have any questions about INCO, maybe we will uh, receive it uh, after. That's it, uh, Isabel. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I have to stop the share of my presentation. Sophie? Yeah, if I may. If I may, uh, Jean-Michel and, and Isabel, <clears throat> maybe Jean-Michel, can you comment uh, quickly the, the partnership with Google.org? Yes, I can. I'm not managing that partnership, so it's not, uh, I don't have all the details uh, because uh, INCO is a global organization, is a, an asset management company. So I am the head of the asset management company, the investing firm and with an NGO uh, called inco.org and inco.org, uh, the main activities of inco.org are in the field of uh, training young people uh, to uh, what we call uh, mm -hmm. uh, works for the future uh, and particularly in the, in the world of IT. Okay. So, Training of young people uh, so that uh, that were not uh, uh, that have no, not not a lot of diplomas and uh, to to allow them to enter the the working uh, market uh, in the field of um, IT and we developed a partnership with uh, Google and with other uh, big. Uh, uh, IT companies, uh, so that they are, um, they support uh, the development of uh, training sessions uh, in France and in Europe, uh, dedicated to those uh, those people. And uh, that program is um, implemented in about ten countries in Europe by now, in Poland, uh, in Germany, in Ireland, uh, and uh, it's uh, being implemented. In Ukraine, uh, just by now. as the investment team, we have to analyze uh, the, 
the financial reports of uh, some, uh, some Ukrainian NGOs so as to verify that uh, our colleagues from Ingo that all will be able to, to contact with them uh, with now with uh, corporate risk. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for, for your presentation and for saying about Inco Ventures. Um, I, I was wondering if uh, you can develop more about uh, the experience in your work uh, and the process that you do when you uh, decide to invest and the work with the incubation, if, if you can develop more about this with also practical case, how the process works. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, uh, uh, our main target in terms of uh, investment uh, are the, the, the young companies with a very interesting proposition in terms of the social or environmental impact uh, that have a real potential of development. That when we, our goal is to accelerate that, those companies, that means that uh, we ask that those companies uh, already uh, have a turnover around uh, two or 300,000 uh, euros. It's a minimum for us to, to look at a, at, a, at a company to invest so that we have a certain a vision of the, the, the commercial traction of the company be, before we invest. Um, that means that uh, even when we um, we are interested in financing a company that our incubators, because we manage incubators, my colleagues manage incubators, it's not the financing team, but it's the, the incubator team. Uh, usually, we are not able to to invest in uh, those companies. Uh, just at the end of the incubation period uh, because of uh, the fact that um, incubation programs are dedicated to help startups uh, building a robust uh, product or service, test the commercial traction of their value proposition, uh, but they scarcely have time to obtain during uh, the six or 12 months uh, of the incubation period and have feedbacks in terms of the turnover realized uh, or of turnover committed even uh, to allow us uh, to invest. So we are very interested in um, having a few of um, interesting companies be being incubated, but it's quite scarce that uh, we can invest directly after the incubation in the company. Because we are not a seed investor, we are a maximum investor. Nevertheless, uh, we are, as I said, very interested in uh, having an exchange with the incubation teams of incubators and with uh, the entrepreneurs that are incubated. And a very good practice to do it is to participate to uh, end of incubation sessions. That means that uh, the incubator is preparing uh, the companies that it incubates uh, to uh, each uh, with a panel of potential partners or investors. And uh, we participate a lot of those pitch sessions. It allows uh, us to, uh, to meet the founders of young companies, to hear their pitches, to understand the project, to identify uh, them, the entrepreneurs and the companies that could be interesting for us uh, in the future. And to start throwing them uh, uh, so that uh, when they are uh, the good scale for us, uh, we will be able to propose to them to, to invest. Uh, in fact, uh, we, um, we work with uh, 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 an important number of uh, incubators and mainly with incubators dedicated to social uh, and environmental impact uh, startups uh, in France. So. Uh, we have uh, such an incubator uh, in Lyon, in Bordeaux, we have several in Paris, and uh, we participate uh, to the pitch stations of all those incubators, which are dedicated to uh, social and environmental impact companies. Um, 
we are particularly uh, interested to to work with the incubators that have uh, developed uh, accelerating tracks. So not uh, with uh, very young companies that have not uh, started to uh, commercialize a product or service, but with companies that uh, just have started to commercialize it and the object is to accelerate uh, the, the, the development of the company. Uh, with those ones, uh, we are sometimes able to invest uh, at the end of the accelerating period of the incubator. But in France, we have less uh, accelerators uh, for social and, uh, and environmental impact companies than uh, incubators. Um, we have uh, two or three partners that are particularly interesting because um, they developed incubation accelerating programs, but they were able to connect those programs uh, with um, an investing tool uh, in seed capital or pre-seed capital that they uh, developed by themselves. So uh, that are partners that are able to uh, support, financially support some of the companies that they have incubated or accelerated. Uh, there are mainly two in France that are able to do that, so not many. Uh, one is called Alliance for Impact, uh, and uh, the other one is uh, Make Sense. And the fact is that uh, if you are uh, in a position to uh, invest in a company that was incubated and then financed uh, by the same team, it's a very good indication of the fact that the incubation and the financing team uh, of the Makes sense, for example, uh, really believe that the uh, project is a, has a great potential and gives a, a real trust uh, in, in the, the future of the, the company. Um, what do we, are we interested in uh, when we analyze the uh, company? Uh, and it's important that the, the incubator or the accelerator that presents to us um, the company uh, selects uh, the part of them that they feel that we really have the potential to be uh, invested and that are invested re investment ready. Uh, of course, we look for startups that, uh, that develop a direct social and uh, environmental impact and that are able to a certain, uh, to a certain extent to, to demonstrate that uh, they have an impact. Uh, so uh, we are interested in startups that uh, have a team with a strong potential, and that's a very important maybe, maybe the main point. Uh, the founding team uh, must have the key skills, uh, must demonstrate that they have the networks to, to implement and develop uh, that solution, uh, that they have the, the capacity to organize the future development of the company, and to manage uh, a team. Uh, and of course, uh, we are looking for uh, projects that, uh, uh, that have a strong potential of development, uh, which develop a model that allows for rapid scaling uh, in France, or not uh, inter internationally. Uh, it's important for us that the founders have a clear and ambitious vision of their projects uh, and of the deployment of the project. And uh, as I said, as for us, as an um, accelerating investors, it's important for us to have a first demonstration of the fact that uh, there is a real commercial traction. We need a tra strategic plan, we need a business plan, we need a financing plan. And of course, uh, all of that can be provided during the accelerating uh, periods. So uh, IELTS for Impact or Make Sense have uh, programs uh, that are dedicated to investment readiness to, to help the companies we, find, we will finance finally uh, to be investment ready because they have a clear strategic plan, business plan, financing plan, and a clear vision of uh, what is your, their 
challenges in terms of uh, organization uh, and management. And uh, what else can you say? I think it's, uh, yes, yes, just to insist, I, I come back to the pitch session. Uh, as I said, uh, we are not able to finance in pristine or seed, but uh, the key point, uh, I think it's that uh, the incubator develops a network of possible investors, of business angels, clubs, uh, for very, very early stage uh, of seed capital funds. So there are some in France, uh, maybe abroad, but not enough, uh, I think, but uh, it's important, of course, to have connections with them. And with Crowd Equity Platform, so we have one in France which is dedicated to um, a social and environmental impact called Vita.co, and Vita.co uh, provides to uh, their clients possibilities to invest. Uh, including in, uh, in seed companies, and of course, uh, develop uh, relations with uh, pre A series or A series back in the seed funds like S, uh, so that um, the startups can be uh, introduced uh, during the pitch session, for example, like during the one to one series uh, two uh, that can be organized by the accelerator. Uh, introduced to, to that ecosystem of, of investors and uh, to maximize their, their chance to, to be uh, financed uh, under different uh, uh, at the different moments of life. That's it. I don't know if it was clear. Yes, uh, yes, very much. Thank you for, for sharing. And it's also very clear how the, the idea is really to have this journey for them. And then to, to be properly equipped, have seed capital, and then you intervene and, and support them. Uh, so uh, thanks for, for sharing. I don't know if anyone uh, in the audience ha has a question. Uh, please feel free to also just jump in and unmute yourself. Can I can I do a question? Yes. Yeah. Um, I noticed that uh, you speak a lot about um, French. That is the main topic of the, the session of today. But I want to know more about uh, the opportunity that uh, INCO invest in other countries and the relationship, the hypothetical relationship with the incubator of a other country. And uh, that's it. Well, what I told you is the reality. It means that we mainly invest in France by now. But uh, as I said, uh, we are we are investing if we find the opportunity to do it, and if we find if we find uh, good partners, the right partners, uh, to invest in uh, interesting projects in other countries. Uh, and that's we we did a few months ago uh, with uh, Lambda M uh, in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, so um, if uh, you are incubating or accelerating uh, projects that uh, respond to uh, the characteristics that I explained to you uh, in, uh, in Milan, for example, we, we, we could uh, have a look at it. We have, uh, in fact, uh, a bureau in uh, Milan uh, dedicated to training uh, subjects, but there is a Google representant uh, in the town. So uh, why not uh, uh, having a look uh, to, to a project? We work with Generali, and Generali is very happy if we to invest in Italy too, so uh, why not? The, the real uh, possibility of developing an investment uh, activity in, uh, in Italy or in another European country would be that uh, we, we get uh, a clear mandate uh, from one of our investors to develop an impact investing fund in that country or to develop a new European impact in the town that uh, which mandate would be to, to invest in several countries. Uh, but I know our mandates are to invest mainly in France. And if we find some opportunities, it's possible to do it in other countries, but it's not a part of the plan. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Thank you, Francesca, for, for your question and, and Jean-Michel as well. And what is the situation in Italy? Do you have um, um, a continuum of actors that allows to uh, incubate, to accelerate, to to finance, to precede and then see the capital, the, the young startups? So, yeah, we have different model of acceleration. We have a free acceleration in which uh, we didn't invest in, but we accelerated the team and we support them to meet uh, the investor in a seed stage. So we help the startup to meet the, inv the, the investor that are uh, uh, social venture capital uh, with the, um, that invests uh, 500 uh, or something like that. This is one model. Another model is uh, acceleration with investment. We create uh, two uh, vertical accelerator, one on blue economy, another on welfare, in which we did the first uh, seed investment of uh, 1000, something like that. And after uh, we, we did a program of uh, four months of acceleration, with mentor, expert, and sometimes some corporate that can help the development of startups. At the end of the, this program, we can do another uh, seed investment, a follow-on of other uh, one, one thousand or something like that, and we we present the the startups at investor. So when I did the, this question for you, I uh, I have my mind that the, the second type of uh, of acceleration that is acceleration with investment. So basically, is startup with the, that are revenue making when we invest uh, in them, and we we did the two seed investment, and after we present them to investors. So. Okay, so you are in the, the same kind of model that I described uh, that uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, uh, but uh, only in two sectors that are blue economy and the welfare. But I think that welfare can be uh, suitable. Yeah, I think so. We have some relations with corporate in the insurance company that are partner of this program and help the startups in the development of the, in the acceleration phase before the investment. So I think that also uh, insurance uh, or organ or this kind of corporate can be interested in, in these startups. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Anyone has maybe another question? Yeah, I, I have one. Um, yep. I, I currently get a lot of companies from uh, Ukraine that now want to get access to the European market. So that can be medical devices, that can be uh, social enterprises, that can be uh, all kinds of things. And they're very often like struggling with getting compliance in order, but also things like the language or uh, knowing which, uh, for example, consortia or stuff they can join in order to bring their product to the market. Uh, I was wondering what kind of experiences experiences you have with these kinds of companies, uh, because my experiences are that companies from uh, people with a very different background can be can also struggle like in very practical terms uh, that are not necessarily associated to the company itself, but more the situation the person is and so the founders are in as well. So I was wondering what kind of experiences you have with that. I I don't really have ex that kind of experience. Uh, in uh, the fact is that our um, the founders of the company we finance by now are mainly French people or sometimes French people uh, that were born in Africa, for example, but that, that studied in France. Uh, we we did not finance by now. I just think to identify. Uh, I think we did not finance any company that was. Uh, created by a, a foreign uh, entrepreneur uh, coming in France uh, to to develop a, a business. So I'm sorry, I don't have Okay. <laughs> Thanks. But I have a, a, a question for Christina, because as I said, uh, one of our impact investing funds is dedicated partly to potentially finance, invest in companies created by uh, refugees uh, in France. But the fact is that by now we were not able to identify any refugee that uh, would uh, 
lead uh, the next writing company that would uh, be uh, that could be financed by uh, funds. So we wonder we is that because those companies does not exist or that not exist do not exist yet? Is, is it because we don't have the good network and we, it, we are should... not able to identify them? It's usually the network. That's my experience also when I was working with Syrian companies. Uh, so people that, that fled from the, the war, the civil war in, the, in Syria. It's usually, they, they still have their own networks and they need to get adjusted to the new, also commercial environment that they're in. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's also then difficult to, to know which companies exist and what kind of business they do. So that's... That, that requires some exploration. That's uh, and sometimes it's easy. They come to you because they they require help or they need something. Um, but for them, it's usually already difficult to find you because you speak a different language or you're from a, a country that's new from them. And then yeah, you you get like these additional barriers uh, that that maybe don't exist or these barriers are much lower for like the local population. Uh, so in my experience, that's that's usually network. That's uh, network and and like the knowledge that they can do something like this that something like this exists and it's also there to help them but that's that's my experience with it but uh no i'll rebound on on that um so it, it is it is a little bit network it's i think it's twofold in the sense that there's a gap um fair we're working pre-seed Pre precede, and we're a small fund. We have small amounts. Our loans are 20 to 30,000 euros. So it's really for, um, we're a logical next step from the incubator programs that exist. Uh, we supported the Combo program, which was run by Make Sense and uh, Elan Interculturel, Singa, uh, Place Network. We're really focused, our work to date has been focused on really the early stages of the life cycle of, of an entrepreneur and, and a startup. So from ideation, ideation, ideation to, um, uh, to soft launch. Uh, and our loan program will start soft launch and accompany the entrepreneur to the hard launch um, and pass that. And uh, because our loans are several years in length, um, we're really, we're working and we're seeing a few of our entrepreneurs develop and get to a stage where they're going to start to need to fundraise, but we're not series A. I mean, they're not series A yet. So one problem is that there's a gap. And part of it is that they're not able to get to series A because they can't get past soft and hard launch because there's not enough support. And because they don't have, they don't have the networks, they don't have the language, they're cut out of the system naturally naturally, unfortunately, but naturally because of the situation, because they don't have the professional networks, they've left those behind in their home country. Uh, and so FAIR, that's one area that we try to support. Um, one thing we're looking at, and one of the reasons why I was interested here is, is we're, we're, we're in a thought process now, we're trying to figure out what the next step is, because there really is, I think, uh, there's a missing middle ground. And what uh, our partner, our charity partner incubator programs, we'll call acceleration, is not acceleration as we know it in the investment world. It is, you know, it's not series A, series B. It's, it's accelerating the project past where they're at today. So it's accelerating to launch. Sometimes it's accelerating to expand their launch and get ready to uh, to launch an investment, to, to launch capital equity investment uh, seed fund round. The other thing is, uh, when we started to do um, call for proposals, so the first year that we did a call for proposal for our loan program, people came out of the woodwork. So the second half of that is that I think there are refugee entrepreneurs around that have managed on their own. Um, may or may not be Series A fund ready, however. So that's a little bit of a, a judgment, but I do think it's about making the information as loudly available as possible. So it needs a huge comps campaign to say, hey, not only, you know, we have investment opportunities and here are our criteria. You have to be a refugee and or for fair, it's refugee or migrant. But, um, but the fact that we publicly say, 
this is part of our criteria. So this is a good thing. <laughs> Sounds terrible to say it that way, but for us, this is a deciding factor. And that made people come to us because otherwise it's not in their best interest to advertise that they come from a refugee or migrant background because the discrimination is fairly, is fairly all encompassing and not just in France. Um, so they are traditionally thinking that my best way out of this is not to talk about this at all. And there's also a desire to, to manage, to prove, to prove that they are competent and capable because they've been thrust into a situation where they don't speak the language, they don't understand all the codes. So it's this learning process which tends to set aside and fair, our, our goal is to say, look, we know, we know you're not gonna have a perfect pitch. We know not all the lingo is going to be there. You're not going to have the, all the love money that normal startup investor circles require, but we're, we know that, so we're okay. So what we're gonna do is take a bit more time, talk to you, get to know you, figure out your project, understand and base our decision on the skill sets that are there, regardless of the language, regardless of the culture and the, invest and the entrepreneurs that we have invested in uh, through the loan program, you know, they're, they're solid, but it's a longer time frame. It's a longer time frame because they are working with language difficulties, with understanding sector, with understanding the culture and whatnot. And that's fair as providing the extra support there. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, it's, so it's the twofold, it's the twofold situation. And I do think the gap is, is this middle ground that needs a bit more support to get them to investment seed investment round or series A past that. But I do think there are other, you know, that it's call, call for applications. I think by doing that, that's where you, you'll find that others will come out of the woodwork that you don't know because they don't, they don't identify themselves in their marketing, in their, in their, um, in their, their business plans as refugee or migrant um, backgrounds because it's not in their best interest. Okay, Jason, thank you but for- happy, happy to talk to you about this more, uh, you know, at a later date. <laughs> okay, we will have each if you, if you agree and uh, it would be possible to explain uh, exactly what we do, what, what we do, and, and to see if there could be a, a way to, to fill the gap. Okay, thank you. Um, we didn't hear you anymore, Christina, at the end. Oh, sorry, I just said that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, that's really uh, exciting. <laughs> Thanks for, for sharing um, thoughts, insight and experience. I don't know if someone else has uh, another question. Um, otherwise I, I would have maybe something about uh, impact. You, you mentioned that one of the criteria um, to select is uh, impact for, for those um, uh, startups. And I was wondering, um, Maybe you have some recommendation for the new ones in the field or for, for those who are mainstream, but what do, what do you recommend as an incubator accelerator, how to uh, better support those entrepreneurs with uh, impact measurement and management so that they are ready for, for the investment? Well, I can tell you uh, the way we support uh, the entrepreneurs that we finance because uh, sometimes uh, uh, they have not uh, a lot of uh, measurement tools uh, for their impact when we find them. Uh, in fact, we, we tell them, uh, we ask them to precise uh, first uh, what, is, what are their uh, impact objectives, uh, strategic objectives. Uh, well, what is the goal of your company in terms of impact? For, for the, for the simple question. And it allows us usually to identify uh, one or two or three uh, impact goals uh, with the entrepreneurs. Uh, we try to connect uh, those goals uh, with uh, the SDGs and the target SDGs, so the under SDGs. Um, but it's a question for us of, of uh, being able to to connect to a framework that is uh, known by everyone. 
uh, when we have identified those uh, impact goals with them, uh, we are working with them to identify the, the indicators that will uh, the best um, produce uh, the realization of the goals, uh, the, the, out, uh, the output, the outcome the indicators, and why not the impact indicators? And we asked them to uh, to identify the indicators, to build a um, uh, method of measurement. Uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, just a, a question of identifying the good indicator. It's the question of to be able to collect the data that will uh, that will demonstrate that uh, you uh, uh, you are able to produce something interesting. So you have to have a, a system to produce the data around those indicators. And finally, we we work with them. Uh, we call it a roadmap, an impact roadmap. So uh, for each um, impact strategy goal and for each indicator connected to that goal, uh, what is your plan? How do you project? Uh, what is your ambition? Uh, for the next few years. And uh, we are building that impact roadmap with them. Uh, it's a two to five years roadmap. And uh, well, so it would be interesting for us because uh, if that work well, was done with the incubator uh, or the accelerator before, but, uh, uh, well, we, we finance to pronounce that. That come not all from incubators or accelerators, but um, uh, uh, the important part of them are not done uh, that before them, so we can explain that. Thanks for, for sharing about uh, this process and these uh, questions and tools. Um, I propose we, we're going to close. Maybe anyone else has uh, a question or comment? No, then I will propose that uh, we, we're going to close this conversation. I just want to briefly also share some uh, next steps. Um, I will share a slide. Okay, so yes, uh, as uh, in terms of next steps, we are going to continue with our switch pitch series as we have um, one more episode, which um, Here we go. One more episode on the uh, 27th of September with Markus Freiburg from FASA. Uh, it will be with a focus on Europe. So we really invite you to join us and it will be moderated by my colleague Martin. And at the same time, I wanted to share some updates concerning the bed incubation contest. So at the moment, all the applications are being evaluated and then the winners are gonna be uh, pitching during one of our sessions at the EVPA Impact Week um, during this final event of our project, Better Incubation. And so we really hope you can join us. It will be on the 2nd of December. And uh, I also want to say thank you so much for uh, today. It was a pleasure to have this conversation together. Thank you also Jean-Michel for sharing and for the time with us and also the rich exchanges that took place, especially on the thematic of refugees. So thank you to you all for joining us and uh, I wish you a great day and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye, thank you. Hey, thanks. Hey. Thank you.